I was asked to do a TED talk on on the you know the companion animal crisis we have in this country, and and, uh, and it was good timing because I've been doing a lot of things uh, as an animal rescuer and as a veterinarian for the last 40 years that hopefully will impact society, the, the programs I'm working on, in a very positive way, not only to help people but to help animals. So obviously, uh, my whole evolution. Uh, as, an, as a kid, uh, you know, growing up in the Midwest and, and not having a lot of options uh, because of my background. My mother came from 10, 11 kids, my dad came from 12. No one had gone to college on either side of the family because we were just immigrants. And uh, <clears throat> just thankfully, we we're in the United States of America and, and we were just appreciative of having our families and having opportunities albeit they weren't they were pretty limited but in my case i read a book called all creatures great and small when i was in high school like the end of my junior year and it was about a veterinarian in, in 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 england who was in the world war ii and then after the war he settled in northern england worked for an eccentric veterinarian and he proceeded to chronicle his life as a veterinarian and he really focused on the personalities of his clients and how they interacted with their pets. And I read this book and I fell in love with veterinary medicine and I decided to become a veterinarian. And I had a lot of challenges because I had not taken any college prep courses in high school. I was at the end of my senior, junior year. So senior year was very challenging to try to convince the people at my school, the smart, the educators at my school that, hey, what switch turned that made this kid from being just a, a blue collar kid who's taking nothing but uh, vocational classes to now wanting to get into the hardest school in America. Because at the time there were only, I think, 18 veterinary schools in the whole country. And Vietnam was winding down and everybody wanted to be a veterinarian and everybody wanted to live on a farm. So that's what I was up against. But against all those odds of, and, and everybody uh, uh, just telling me there's no way you're going to become a veterinarian, I became a veterinarian. And I did it in record time. I was able to get all the classes I needed to apply to Purdue University my senior year because of the kindness of a lot of teachers who were cheering for me. And then uh, I did four years of college at Purdue because I was paying for it and I, I gained the system. But I was able to take more, a lot more classes than I was supposed to for the same price because I guess had doughy eyes and they felt sorry for me. But I was able to cram four years of college in two. Well then, I had the great fortune of being accepted at the University of Georgia Veterinary School and uh, came down to Georgia and went to vet school for four years and I settled here in Atlanta. And it probably was very fortuitous that I did because I met some very inspirational people who really Early in my career as a veterinarian, I, obviously I was a hard worker and I, I, I'm a, I have a good business mind uh, and I, I own multiple practices now, and, but I met people early in my career that really were looking at the big picture of this world we live in, the animals that live in this world with us, and, and the people that on, on, on how, how we can all work together to be happy and, and to be positive and to do good things in the world. So I got that cemented into me at an early age. And so uh, in the early 80s, a rescue group started popping up in Atlanta. And I reached out to them. I said, hey, listen, I can't do rescue. But you know what? I can help you guys do rescue by giving you breaks. Because there weren't a lot of vets that were helping uh, 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 rescue groups. So I gave them very generous discounts and on medicine and on my services. And I became a rock star. Well, fast forward to the late 90s, it was brought to my attention by one of my rescue groups uh, named Southern Hope, who had um, taken over the contract at the, at the Fulton County Animal Shelter. And it was a real challenging time because for the previous 40 years, the, the people that were running it just really didn't have much focus on trying to find homes for these poor animals. They kept them for the bare minimum of time and, and, and they had very high euthanasia rates. Well, Southern Hope, one of these rescue groups that I was providing veterinary services for, took over the contract. 
And against my better judgment, I agreed to be their medical director because no one else would take the job. So as a result of being down there working at the, uh, at the uh, uh, shelter, I saw the challenges that were ahead for trying to solve it. And back then, at that point in time, in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, we were euthanizing 15, 20 million dogs and cats a year in this country, and their only uh, crime was they were homeless and their punishment was death. So I agreed to be their medical director, and boy, was I exposed to the part of the world I had no idea going on. But to their credit and to our partnership and hard work, we were able to cut the euthanasia rate in half. And then they were able to hire a full-time vet. So I was able to go back to me in my veterinary clinic and just working with rescue groups. But in the meantime, I had, I had taken a lot of dogs and cats out of the shelter because they were being, because they were injured and they had no money for, no budgeted money for, for, um, for medical care. So I would bring them back to town and country, my main hospital and I would get them fixed up, and I started the Homeless Pets Foundation. And the Homeless Pets Foundation just changed my life because now I was in a situation where I could really impact because I was doing rescue and I was also a veterinarian. And when I was down there working with them at the, at the animal shelter, they, some days, even though they were, we cut the youth nature dramatically, they still were more coming in than going out even though they were reaching out to, to greater Atlanta. And they had to do euthanasia. And they had uh, people trained to do that, but some days they wouldn't show up and I would have to do it. And the only reason, way I could do it is tell every one of these dogs and cats that I euthanize that they're not gonna die in vain. I'm gonna find the answer to euthanasia for population control. And that's been my life mission since that moment in time. And as a process of going out and speaking to schools and whatever, I had an opportunity to speak at an elementary school and I was asked to talk to these kids for three hours, and I, I was able to tell them everything I need that they need to know about veterinarians in a New York minute, because I wanted to get out of there and get back to my clinic, because I totally forgot I agreed to do this. But after I, and I told them that vets, little kids now, and these were poor kids, that my job as a vet was to make their little friend happy again, because when they're sick, they're sad, when they're well, they're happy. That's what vets do. I got a nice applause. I was going to leave, but this young teacher said, boys and girls, do you have any questions for Dr. Good? And boy, did they, have, did they want a piece of me. And for three hours I was there, but none of these kids asked me a question. All they did was tell me stories about animals in their life. And when they told me that, that's the inspiration for the Homeless Pet Clubs of America. Because they were telling me about animals in their life, even my name, dogs or cats that they owned. They might have been neighbors, uh, cat had kittens, but these kids were passionate about it, their pets. And as a result, okay, and as a result of that moment in time, that's where I got the idea for the Pet Clubs of America. And the way they work, and this is going to be unbelievable, and this is what everything's about in the future, is kids in school start a club. But it's not a club where they learn to be, speak French better or a club on, you know, you name it. Uh, it's a club for kids that love animals. And in this club, they all, they, they capture the image of a dog or cat in their community and they go home and mom puts it on Facebook and everything because they tell their mom, well, we can't adopt it because Dr. Good said that'll make you mad. But they tell the story and when that dog or cat gets adopted, we have the family come out to that school if it's pet friendly. and tell these kids they did something significant, they saved a life, which builds their self-esteem. It helps, and our, our, our message in, in the Homeless Pet School Clubs of America is be kind to everything. So we have the answer to bullying in schools because criminologists say we need to teach empathy to the perpetrator, those that, that are bullies, and we have to teach them kindness. And we do that through these pet clubs. So my mission, over the next few years is to make sure we have one of these homeless pet rescue clubs in every school in America. And the earlier the better. And, and these kids embrace that everything has value. So be kind to everything. So we, t we kill two birds with one stone, even though we're not killing any birds. We're teaching, we're helping to stop bullying in schools because we're getting the kids young and teaching them to be kind. And we're stopping a, 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 
euthanasia of adoptable dogs and cats because the magic of the school clubs of America is when a bunch of kids in a school anywhere in America are telling the story about a dog or cat in their community the partner their rescue partner promises they won't put that dog to sleep so there's no longer an expiration date on that dog or cat so the mission is to get thousands and thousands of school clubs and get every adoptable dog and cat that's in a shelter humane society or rescue group sponsored by one of these school clubs and they'll all get homes and none of us and all of us will sleep better at night because we know that all the animals are being saved because all the studies show that people that have pets live longer are happier kids that grow up with pets uh, are more successful in life are more communicative and everything is positive if we're all part of the solution and these school clubs of America are just the beginning, but it's a great beginning.